If your bike sounds like this, you just might have an ignition timing issue. It doesn't have to be that extreme. In this case, it only happens after the engine has been running for five minutes, but bad spark timing could make it hard to start an engine or make it not run very smoothly. You might have to keep giving it gas to keep it running. It's one of those things, if you adjust your carb and it still doesn't run right, then check the points, which you're supposed to do it every thousand miles, so I'm overdue. This is part of the ignition system, which basically makes electricity or harnesses it to make explosions that power the engine. The points are mechanical gaps. Electronic ignition uses electronic stuff and is usually found in things after 1980 and makes it so you don't have to do any adjustments. And yes, you can just replace your points with an electronic thing if you want to, in general, I think it's harder to adjust the points on little Hondas or a 50cc engine in general than your average motorcycle because it's caged behind the flywheel so you're jamming stuff in this tiny hole. It's all made of metal and there's a magnet in there that pulls everything away from where you're trying to get it to go. And it's all down lower so you're crouching over like you're trying to fix a sink. So, now that you know how awful this will be, let's get started. You can do this by opening the access panel, but I have to take off the flywheel, and I'm hoping I don't have to replace anything. But yeah, skip ahead to the setting the point gap time code if you want to get right to the main plot of this. So, you've gotten your side panel off, and everything looks much dirtier than this. Of course, you've already bought your 27mm crank puller tool, but you've got to get this bolt off first. It's 17mm, it holds the flywheel on. This is easy, right? Except when you turn it, it wants to spin. So what you want to do is take a metric bolt that threads into your engine. It could be one that was holding your side panel on and find a smaller bolt that fits into one of these holes. Some are threaded, some aren't. Then you're gonna get a little wrench and put it between the two bolts so it won't spin lefty-loosey for taking the nut off. Then you take this and I've already broken the bolt, but you would hammer it until it comes loose. So now get your 27 millimeter crank arm puller that you've definitely bought and have with you right now. This is a C100 1958 to 1965, and I think your classic run of Honda 50 C50s is the same, but a C70, a C90, I have no idea, so threader beware. One tool may not rule them all. Like Lord of the Rings? The way this works is you thread it on in reverse so it's lefty tighty. Then you righty tighty the bolt inside through so it pushes the flywheel away from the engine. So the wide thread is attached to the flywheel and the one in the middle is just pushing it off the rod that it's on. And it comes off easy, but the thing that's holding it in now are the flywheel magnets, so have fun with that. Fun's only fun if everyone's having fun. Here I am filing the points if it's, you know, gritty looking or uneven. You can use sandpaper folded so both sides are gritty. I have a points file, so you can just push the points open at any time. It's just a lever and file away till it looks clean. Notable landmarks in here are the two coils. Right is for spark and left is for accessories, like your headlight. And at the bottom is the condenser, which is like a battery, but it stores and releases energy really quickly. And could also be the cause of my problems. 
The flywheel can only go back on one way. There's a key under here, and a slot here. So you just push it back on and use the nut to hold it in place. Welcome to the setting the point gap time code. To start, rotate the flywheel counterclockwise so the F mark lines up with the index mark. F means fire, like spark, and the index exists here, on the service panel, and on the engine. Now, we're gonna use a .0015 inch feeler gauge that is a super thin, even for feeler gauges, and measure how wide the space is between the points at the F mark when it's just opening. If you watched my valves video, there are some similarities in what we're doing here. Now, you could adjust this by eye, like you don't have to have a feeler gauge, but then you have to confirm that everything's correct, and because of the way everything is so compressed together, I'm going with the easiest way, which is I bought a timing gun. I mean, it's so cheap. And it's not like you're gonna do this once and you're all set. Remember, every thousand miles, hypothetically. So you're at least gonna do this every 5,000 miles. And yeah, there's other ways to test, but with everything being so cramped, if the engine's running, this is the way I wanna do it. Basically, you're loosening this locking screw so you can slide. The whole thing is called a contact breaker. There's a dowel in the middle of it so you can pivot it to the left or right, and that positioning sits when the inner flywheel shaft, which is not a perfect cylinder, hits the lever so the point's open. So let's check alignment with this gun that is basically a strobe light. You gotta hook it up to 12 volt DC for power, any kind of battery or power station, not your Honda C100 battery, which is six volt and then put this sensor on the spark plug wire. From the side of the bike where the flywheel is facing out, if the line is to the left of the index mark, it's delayed, meaning the gap is opening later than it should be for ideal firing. If it's to the right of the mark, it's advanced, meaning the gap is opening too soon. The flywheel is spinning counterclockwise, or from above, the mark would be moving from right to left. So in this case, it's advanced. Spark is happening too soon. I want the gap to open later. I want to delay it from where it is so it'll line up with the index mark. I'm gonna say it another way so you could really absorb this. You have my undivided attention. Sequentially, the fire mark comes before top, the highest point of the piston so it's sparking just before it gets to the top. In this case, it's advanced because the mark is appearing to the right of the index. That means it is firing before the F mark reaches the index. Okay, got it? Good. In this case, the timing may be slightly impeding the piston from moving at its full potential, and if it were delayed, it would be like it's just not helping as much as it could. And in the manual, they say retarded, but I'm saying delayed. I'm a millennial. I have a very woke accent. It's just the way I pronounce things. So because it's advanced, I want to loosen the locking screw and pivot the contact breaker unit slightly to the right. So if you got it close to using a feeler gauge, it might be easier to take the flywheel off and just nudge it a little. Like, not even a nudge, just loosen the screw, look at it while thinking about what you want it to do. That's how small these movements are. These apples. And of course in Canada, the whole thing's flip-flop. Oh my, I better get you some cider. And at the very least, taking off the flywheel lets you understand what you're doing. Cause you can actually see everything and that's what makes it easier to do on larger motors, because stuff isn't so packed together, and you're not hunched over trying to unstick your screwdriver from a magnet as you cast shadow over the thing you're trying to see with super precision. Just remember this. Left advances, right delays. Now, this is where the service manuals are just suck. 
they say the wrong thing or they don't say it clearly like some trick question on a multiple choice test. If you need to make it so spark happens sooner, you pivot up with your flathead screwdriver causing the breaker panel to shift to your left at the top where the screw is. As a result, the arm with the rubbing block at the bottom will move in the opposite direction because basically you're rotating this thing. So you're spinning the unit to the left. If you loosen the locking screw then push down with your screwdriver, you are rotating it to the right, making it so the rubbing block is further away from the lobe that it hits. So it's not gonna open as soon and that will delay timing. So again, when you've got it so you're near the index mark, like you're able to start the bike and it doesn't sound like a nightmare, you're doing micro nudges to the point where it feels like tightening the locking screw might affect calibration. So in my quest to line it up with the index mark, I'm going back and forth and overshooting by a little and then a lot, and finally I'm on the mark or slightly delayed. It doesn't have to be perfect but I am noticing some jitter in the timing, whether or not that means anything. Spoilers, I had to buy new old stock Honda points and a condenser, because now that my timing is all set, my problem is actually worse. The points are a part that does wear out, like you can see there's a little chip of it missing on the side, and when it's running, I can see random errant sparks occasionally, so I think it's worse because I kept filing the points and that made my gap bigger. And maybe I was benefiting from my timing being a little advanced, but I'm not really sure what my timing was to start with. And then there's the condenser. If it's bad, the points will burn out and its failure could be causing this unpredictable performance. Like it's not dead, but it's not behaving reliably. And unfortunately, now I have to make a video about replacing that stuff. <sighs> But hey, we got the timing set right, and when it's not sputtering, it runs great. You know, if you lived here, you'd be home by now. Yeah, that's the spirit. In the unfortunate sequel to this, I'll also look further down the chain at the ignition coil. If it's bad, that affects spark. Mine is purple, whatever that means. Purple is brighter than blue, whatever that means. I have a new spark plug, so that's not the issue. I could always convert to electronic ignition and then it would just auto magically work, but I've become so fluent in adjusting the points and I have the timing gun, plus replacing everything with original parts is still one third the price of electronic, so I feel like I can make it work. And on top of that, pre-1966 Hondas don't have a voltage regulator. What does that mean for a electronic ignition's longevity? Right? Like, that's why you can't use LEDs on these, because they get burnt out. But if you want to ride a 60-year-old vehicle, these are the things you have to deal with. Here's to the points. The cause of, and solution to, all of life's problems. Yeah!